Welcome to One on One. The Army Reserve celebrates a centennial of service. Listen in as Lieutenant General Jack Stoltz, Chief of the Army Reserve, talks to our Gail McCabe. Let's start off with a basic question. If someone was going to be entering the Army Reserves today, what could they expect? They could expect uh, a challenging experience. They could expect a rewarding experience. They could expect to be mobilized and deploy in support of their nation on a regular basis. How regular these days? With the long war on terror, uh, we have had to transform the reserve components, both guard and reserve, from what we used to know as a strategic force. Now we've had to transform into an operational force that said you've got to be ready when the call comes and we need you on a repeated basis to sustain a long war. So we're building a model in the Army Reserve. It's a five-year model so that the soldier could expect to have one year of usage, mobilization, either here in the continental United States or somewhere overseas, and then be back for four years before they would be expected to get called up again. How long before that model gets put into play? The target date right now that I've given the Chief of Staff of the Army is by 2011. We've already arrayed our forces across that five-year plan. So we're getting there. The challenge we've got is the enemy gets to vote. <laughs> and so while we may plan to send, for example, four engineer units this time, mm -hmm. uh, the theater, the commander on the ground over there may come back and say, you know, because of situations that have occurred over here, I really need five. You know, the great news is the soldiers are stepping forward and saying, if you need me, I'll be there for you. Are you having challenges in retention or recruitment? Not really. I'll tell you the biggest challenge we have in recruitment. We're meeting our recruiting goals. The challenge is finding individuals in this nation that are qualified. The target group uh, that we start with in recruiting for the Army, not just the Army Reserve, for the Army, we start off and say, let's identify the 17 to 24 year old male population. And then we'll expand from there, older, different gender, things like that. In that 17 to 24 year old male population now in America, only three out of 10 individuals qualify to be in the armed services. 40% of them are not educationally qualified. That's an indictment on our education system in America. 40% of that 17 to 24 year age group are either not high school grads or they can't pass the aptitude test required to get in the military. Another percentage of them can't pass the drug test. Another percentage of them can't pass the physical test. Another percentage of them has moral issues in terms of a record. But in the Army Reserves, are you not looking for an older individual? Well, that's, the that's the advantage we have. We, we have two advantages. Uh, in the Army Reserve, we're looking for, in a lot of cases, an older individual who's probably already established okay. in a job or, or some other career, but he wants to serve his country. Mm -hmm. And we offer them that opportunity. One of, the, one of the things we're doing right now is this partnership with the industry in America. If we're going to sustain an all-volunteer reserve component force where we're going to ask a soldier to repeatedly mobilize, serve his country, leave his job, leave his family, we've got to have the employers supporting us. And how are you gaining that? I just talked about the challenge we have in finding a qualified individual. Well, those employers are having the same challenge. And I say, guess what, guys? I've already got them. They're in my ranks. They're called warrior citizens. So why wouldn't you let me be a recruiter for you? So you provide them trained and skilled individuals with the caveat that you get to call them back into service when they're needed? Exactly. And how's the reception been? They're, they're saying this makes a lot of sense. We're getting ready to sign some memorandums of agreement with the American Truckers Association, with some hospital groups, with some other organizations that says we want the Army Reserve to help find us employees. If you're in the Army Reserve and you're trained as a military policeman, then they can very quickly put you into their force. One new program that's been uh, very highly touted by the active Army is the Army Family Covenant. Mm -hmm. What impact has that had on the Army Reserve in your families? I sat in a, in a meeting with General Casey uh, several months ago and we were talking about what do we need to do to take care of our families? What, what else do we need? What more do we need? And on the active and reserve side. And we came up with a list of things. And it totaled up to about $100 million. 
And he turned around to the Army budget officer and said, do it. And that person said, well, sir, we have to. And he said, do it. They need it. That's a commitment from the leadership. Our audience is military. It's also civilian. What would you have them know about the Army Reserve and reservists today? We've got the highest quality force we've ever had in terms of the quality of individuals, in terms of their dedication to service. Uh, you know, the, the soldiers that we have signing up in the Army Reserve today know what they're getting into. It's the highest quality I've ever seen. You've been listening to a one-on-one -on -one with Lieutenant General Jack Stoltz, Chief of the Army Reserve.